Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about the interface to control the plane wave ascension mount and, the, and this has a 24 inch plane wave on top of it at a remote site and I've been working on this for a couple weeks getting everything up and running because I've, I've actually worked with remote observatories for over 11 years now. So, um, the first thing I need to do is turn on the power. So let me go turn that on. And now that the power is on, the control panel is initialized. I am using TeamViewer to demonstrate uh, this remote capability. Okay, so I'm going to launch the software. And uh, it starts by initializing. And once it's initialized, it will tell you that the scope is not in, it is not initialized and it's parked. And why it's not initialized is because it's kind of in a parked position. Uh, it needs to be uh, put into a position that it knows where it's at. Um, this mount comes with a homing sensor, which is fantastic. So I'm actually going to uh, uh, do that. But before I do that, this edit config right here, this is where you set up the information about the mount. Uh, the COM port and all the other information. PlaneWave gives you a flash drive included with this mount and it's fantastic because it has all the documentations and software. I strongly recommend you read all the documentation and go through it thoroughly. So the first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> the telescope is in a so parked position and the best thing to do after you first start the software is just to go to a home position. Um, Homing sensors are very, very good. Now this is a new setup. This is only about a couple weeks old. That's what I'm working on. So we may run into problems, but that's kind of good because if we do, then you'll know how to get around them. So <clears throat> this is actually moving to a home position. And the homing, what, why the homing position is important is because if you lose power for any reason, the telescope is in a oh, looking directly over the sky. Uh, when you turn the power back on, all you have to do is rehome it. Um, once it's homed, then it remembers where it is in the sky and it's all set to go. Uh, so that's very, very good. So it's getting close to its position. Uh, generally, it's the polar, pol essentially where Polaris is at for the northern hemisphere. And once it is homed, uh, the cursor will move, the yellow cursor you see here will move to the Polaris. This pink cursor is where you actually want to move to. Now it's still not homed yet because it says not initialize uh, scope parked. That's going to get updated here in a second. And uh, <clears throat> it will actually say scope is parked only. So we're just waiting for it to settle down. Um, when it's doing this, you don't want to close this dialog at all. Um, you want to keep this open. Now here you can see the scope is parked, so we can now close this dialog. We're done with it. Okay. Now, if I actually click on this point, because say I want to move to this location right here, you'll bring up this dialog, and I'm going to say go to. But you'll notice it says it cannot slew when parked. And the reason why it's doing that, um, is because it's not tracking. Uh, in a nutshell, it will say scope this park when the tracking is turned off. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the tracking. Now that the tracking's on, I'm actually going to click go to. And this is moving to an object. Um, I'm not sure about how extensive the database is in the software, but this will actually connect to the SkyX through uh, an ASCOM driver that plane wave provides. So if you use SkyX you're, you're, and you feel home in it, then good, you're good to go. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into the model, but this is pretty much how you synchronize the telescope in this software, and this is also how you um, create a pointing model, I believe. This I'm still new to this, so I could be wrong there. Okay, so we've slewed to this position, and I'm going to close this. Now, if I, I did a left click to get to that star, if I do a right click, you can actually type in an RA and deck to move to, like a comet, for example, or an alt as position. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so here's information about where the telescope is, the hour angle and all that. 
Um, this this right here is to use to um, you could pan slew or um, uh, actually go into um, uh, move the telescope manually. Uh, team viewer is hanging up here a little bit, so we'll just wait for it to wake up again. Um, I am using a wireless connection, so it will eventually wake up. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pick slew, and here I can see I can actually move the RA, and you can see it moving along here. Um, there's also a nudge option here, which is kind of nice, or, or jog actually. So, okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the commands, and there's a set park command. The way that works is you actually move the telescope where you want to park it. Once it's there, you'll use the set park function. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and park it. And then this is going to start slew into a park position. Now you saw an unpark there too. Um, I'm familiar with the SciTech software this, which this is based on. Um, if you pick unpark and the telescope is not parked, do not say yes to unpark it. Uh, that will confuse its location in the sky. Um, generally, um, I'm not sure when you would ever use Unpark because you have the home there. Uh, I think for the most part, I think you're going to be happy using just home and park. And you here you'll see that it's putting it into a position, slowly but surely. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice, again, this is a new setup. Um, if your telescope is slightly off balance and the telescope gets in a position where it can get uh, uh, something goes wrong, um, I think we lost team viewer again, but that'll come back here in a minute. <clears throat> uh, you'll have a, you see where it says motor's okay? That means everything's running fine. If this turns red, then you're going to get an option to reset the motors. Uh, again, this is because you might be slightly out of balance or anything like that. Um, this is pretty much all I'm going to talk about with this particular software. So, you have a great J. And once you have this all down, you're going to enjoy your mount.